Chapter 6, Rate of Return Analysis. Before I proceed with the chapter examples, let me explain why the selection criteria for chapter 6 will be different from those of previous chapters. In chapter 4, you were to compare a set of alternatives based on present worth and you must select the numerically largest one at the end, which is the one with the least cost. Chapter 5 is very similar. You were to compare a set of alternatives based on annual worth and at the end you will to select the numerical largest one which is the one with the least cost per year. But chapter 6 will be different. We will be comparing the alternatives based on the return on the investment, meaning what percentage are you gaining from your investment, and you will be comparing only two alternatives at a time. So yes, you may have more in the list. You may have three, four, five, or more, but you're only going to be comparing alternative B against alternative A in each and one of the iterations. So we'll talk about the steps later, okay? But only two at a time. Then after you're done, notice that here is the difference between the two. That will be your we call it incremental rate of return. So you can see it's your I, let's say. The change in I, that's why it's a delta I. Okay, you will compare the result that you get against your target. So you will have a minimum attractive rate of return. So as the name states, it's the minimum that you wanna make. Okay, and based on this, you will be selecting either alternative A or alternative B and then that alternative will go against the next one and the next one and the next one and so forth okay but notice here that once you compare it there's another factor involved depending on your result here you'll be selecting let's say the larger investment alternative or the smaller investment alternative okay so let me explain why that's the case okay so for this I will reference back to that slide. Okay, so okay, that would be a slide six dash eight. And we're going to assume that we have a company called one, two, three. Let's say that this company right here has a minimum attractive rate of return of 16% per year. That means that the company, uh, any investment opportunity that they choose, at least it has to be 16% per year. Okay, And then let's also say that this company has 90000 dollars available to invest okay so that's their budget and they want to make at least 16 percent per year on their investment now let's say that there's two alternatives they have alternative a okay this alternative a requires $50,000 of investment and it's going to be returning that's the way we uh, write it down so it's the I for alternative A it's going to be returning 35% per year and we have alternative B which requires 85,000, so this is more expensive of investment and will be returning only 29% per year. Okay, so which one of these two alternatives do you think it's gonna be more attractive? 
the one that it's cheaper and gives you a larger or a higher return or the one that's more expensive but gives you a lower return so you may say well this one it's saving me money and it's giving me a higher per percentage so let's say that you're gonna pick that one okay but that's really not the case so the question here is why don't we select the alternative okay, with the largest rate of return which in this case is alternative A okay so let me uh, explain why this is not the correct answer so we because remember that you have ninety thousand dollars to invest here you are investing fifty thousand and here you are investing eighty five thousand so what happens with the remaining money because okay, remember that the budget is ninety thousand so here I'm just going to say that since there is no other investment opportunity this it's either alternative a or alternative b what happens with the remainder money is that the company is still going to invest it somewhere else Okay, so maybe uh, in a bank account so, or maybe they buy uh, bonds, uh, they open a CD, etc. But they have to use that money somewhere. So worst case scenario, so you don't get to use all the money for alternative A or B, the remainder of that money, of the $90,000, will be invested at at least 16% per year. Okay, because remember that's the least that they want. So here I'm going to write down as your notes. There's also an assumption. Assume that the company invests the remaining money at the minimum attractive rate of return which is 16 percent okay so I don't know if you guys remember but from chapter one okay so if you want to find the interest rate it would be the interest accrued divided by the original amount this is from chapter one let me write it down here this is a formula for your interest and in percentage or return rate of return so it's the interest accrued over the original amount okay so now let's make the cal the calculations if we want to know the overall not just for this part of the investment but for the entire ninety thousand dollars the overall rate of return for alternative A will be this 50,000 at 35%, 50,000 at, uh, oh, 35, sorry. Thirty-five plus uh, you have forty thousand dollars left from the ninety thousand. Said so this, you're going to invest it at the minimum attractive rate of return. Then all of this is going to be divided by the original amount, which are the ninety thousand dollars. If you calculate this, you're going to end up with. 26.6% per year for the rate of return and let's do the same thing for our alternative B here you have 85,000 at 29% plus the remaining 5,000 
at the minimum, which is 0 0.16, divided by the original 90,000. This one will actually give you 28.3% per year. So as a matter of fact, alternative B is the one that's going to end up giving you the highest percentage in return. Okay, so remember that the remaining amount, they're going to invest the whole thing at a minimum of 16% per year. Okay, so this is why the initial amount, so this one may have looked uh, higher at the beginning, but everything is related to the principal or to the initial investment. So that's why in here, they take the larger investment or the smaller investment in consideration for your selection guideline.